In our Alcatel network diagram, there are going to be two routers, R1 and R2. Now with Alcatel service routers, you must name the interfaces. So the interface from R1 connecting to R2 will be named R1 to R2. And the interface from R2 connecting to R1 will be called R2 to R1. The actual physical interfaces on both routers will be port 1 slash 1 slash 1. The IP addressing scheme between the two routers will be 10.1.12.0 slash 24 with R1 using dot .1 and R2 using dot .2. R1 will have a system interface of 1.1.1.1 slash 32 and a loopback address of 111.111.111.111 slash .111 24 with an area ID of 49.0001. R2 will have a system interface. Now the system interface also acts as the IS to IS system ID. And that address will be 2.2.2.2 slash 32 with a loopback address of 222.222.222.222 slash 24 with an area ID of 49.0001. Now we're on to what everybody enjoys, the configuration. I have two Alcatel routers, router one and router two already configured. All that I have is IP connectivity between the two of them. R1 will be able to ping R2. So if I do a ping 10.1.12.2, we can see that they can ping. Now if we look under the actual configuration of the routers, so if I say configure router, then I say info, we can see all that I have is the loopback address, the R1 to R2 address and the system in interface and the same on R2, configure router, info. And we have the same on R2. Actually on R2 we also have IS, IS0 configured. So if I just say no IS, that will get rid of that. Now if you watch my system management video, you'll know that we can do an admin save from here so it's backslash and then admin save that will save the configuration and now if we run info we see that that spurious is to is configuration has gone as it was showing if you just do is is and then you do an info so i say back and then info this will configure is to is process zero now that isn't what I usually use. I will be using IS, IS process one. And to configure that, all I need to type is IS, IS one. I will continue to do the configuration of IS to IS. There are a couple of things that you need on each router for IS, IS to be operational. The first thing that you need on Alcatel Lucent routers is an area ID. This area ID will just use 49 as a standard. And you also need at least one IS to IS interface. But in our case, we're going to be using, we're going to be advertising all of the interfaces into IS IS. So first I'll go interface, capital L, tab. It'll do auto completion. And then interface, system and interface R1 to R2. Then I do an admin save. And if I do a show router ISIS1 interface, it will show the interfaces that we have advertised into ISIS. So it's looking good on R1. A, a common convention is that we often see in, in real networks that they use the loopback interface as the system ID. Here we actually have a system interface and that will be used as the system ID. And the way that they get this address into a six byte, because the system interface has to be six bytes long. So the way that they will actually do this, if you have an address which is one dot one dot one dot one as either your system interface or your loopback address to make this 
address compatible for the six bytes, what they do, they will just fill in the leading zero. So you'll have zero zero one dot zero zero one dot zero oops zero zero one dot zero zero one and to make a six byte they will just have a demarcation point here and here and here so you'll have the address as zero zero one zero dot zero one zero zero dot one zero zero one and we can see that if we go back onto R1 and we say show router ISIS1 and then we say host name and you'll see this is the convention so if you were ever, ever wondering how they transpose this address to this address then now you know and we're going to go across to R2 and do the same thing so I'll say ISIS1 area ID is 49 and then we'll say interface we're going to advertise all of our interfaces into ISIS so interface loopback back interface system and interface R2 to R1 we'll save that configuration as we also know that as we can see here that the default for ISIS is to have your router as an L1, L2 level by default. So even though we only have two routers, we should have two adjacencies. We'll have a level one adjacency and a level two adjacency and there will be two separate adjacencies with two separate link state databases. The way that we can verify this is if we go to router one and we type a show show router is to is one adjacency and we can see that we have two total separate adjacencies so you have two adjacencies here and this is an l1 and an l2 adjacency exiting from the r1 to r2 interface we know how to check the system id and to actually be able to check which area is being advertised or received we can run a show router ISIS um, database detail and then we just match by the area so we can see that our area is 49 and our system ID is 0010.0100.1001 and we know that the end selector on routers is 00 by default so we have our full network entity title and the best way that I could really explain to read the network entity title if I've got a little thing here so the way that I would read it we know that our end selector is always one byte zero zero then we've seen how we get our system ID here and that's always six bytes now the minimum configuration that we can have for an area as we've seen is two digits here which is 49 and the maximum is 12 so these two always add up to seven bytes and this is one so one plus seven is eight or you could have this one plus 12 which is 13 plus these seven so your Network entity title can be 8 to 20 bytes. And you must remember that these are hexadecimal numbers. They're not actual normal decimals. So you could have an address of 49, but you could also have an address as an example of something like C4. Let's actually change our addresses on the routers just to prove that point. So if I go back and I say area ID C4 it takes that configuration if I then say no area ID 49 save that configuration and do the same on well actually let's not do the same on R2 and let's see if an adjacency comes up so if I say show So 
it still shows an L1, L2 adjacency, but this is only because this hasn't timed out. So if we do it now, you'll see that you only have an L2 adjacency and there's only one adjacency. And now the reason for that is for two routers to have an L1 adjacency, the area IDs must be the same. And as we can see here, that our local area is C4, but our neighbor's area is 49. Another way to also verify that, if I just clear the screen. Another way to also verify that is if we do a show router root table for the protocol ISIS. And we can see that the root Router preference, the root preference is 18. This would be administrative distance in Cisco terminology. Now, this preference is 18, meaning that this is an L2 route. So it's routing across from R1 to R2 using the L2 topology. If we change the topology back so that it then becomes an L1, we should see that the root preference changes to 15. So if I go across to router 2 now and I say back area C4 and I say no area 49 clear router ISIS1 adjacency then save my config admin save Now we see that we have an L1, L2 adjacency again. And we see that the root preference has changed to 15. 15 denotes that it's a level one adjacency, whereas 18 denotes that it's a level two adjacency. We're gonna actually have a look at some of these levels and how you would, this is a way to change the root preference without actually changing the levels, but we could actually do it by changing the levels. The difference is that if you change a level, if you change a level, it's going to actually cause the protocol to shut down and then to restart. Well, it caused it to shut down and restart here anyway. To actually change a level, there's a couple of things that we need to know. The level could be changed globally or at the interface level. If the level is changed globally, that is inherited to the interfaces. But if it's changed on the interface, that configuration overrides the global configuration but you couldn't have a global configuration stating something like this router is a level one only router and then under the interface have level two so let me just explain what i mean if i was saying at the moment these guys are routing with a level one they have the same area so if i was to say on r2 the level capability globally for this router is level two and then I was to say on the interface that is going across to R1 which is then if I was to say level capability level one now these routers should not have an adjacency because globally the router only accepts level two whereas on the interface level it's level one this is a contradiction so we should actually get no adjacencies whatsoever if I go here and I say clear router ISIS1 adjacency and then I check the adjacencies here there's no adjacency and the reason why is because the, the router itself is a level 2 router it's not feasible to have a level 1 adjacency on the interface level to actually rectify this issue, what I could do is say, if globally, I was to say something like level capability of this router is level one slash two, that should fix the issue. Admin save. And then I clear the adjacencies. And we should see a level one adjacency come up on router one, which we do. 
here it is. So you have a level one adjacency. So the way to actually change the levels on a actual Alcatel, you just type level capability, and then you type the level that you want. So this was just a very quick overview of levels, enabling ISIS on an Alcatel router, looking at the administrative distances, and looking at the areas and how they are set up. So I hope you'll join us in our ne next video. We're going to go into a bit more detail into things like the designated intermediate system, the Dijkstra algorithm. We're gonna look at the priorities, how that changes, hello timers. So I hope you'll join me in the next video. Thanks for watching.